Ah, there you are. I'm here today to read to you from Evel Chatayed Dana Dabra. I'm sorry, it's back to front. Love, Death and Bad Behavior by Jonathan Kudrill. This one's called The Importance of Being Famous. Little John Artistic Worth was blessed with talent from his birth. When he was two, the little mite could effortlessly read and write as well as most grown-ups can speak, in English and in ancient Greek. Nor was this his only skill. From studying with Roland Hilda, he'd a grasp of brush technique that left poor Rubens looking weak. As for his dry point engraving, he'd have had the critics raving if it weren't for father's whim. But later on, we'll get to him. Little John, though barely four, conducted Brahms without a score, with Simon Rattle not much worse. Nor was he behind at verse. He wrote a terse and seminal poem on the work of Theobald Bowen, and uh, thus inspired by wind and wood, could naturally be understood to have a truly pressing need to play upon the beating reed. The oboe and bassoon, indeed, he even played the Ophic lead. His repertoire for this alone, ten compositions of his own in all the usual tonic keys, plus some employed by the Chinese, quite outshone his fine transcriptions of the songs of the Egyptians. All this in so young a child should have sent the public wild so now I'm sure you'll want the crap about his father's handicap. It's simple, really. To his shame, he had a low regard for fame. And feared that if his son were tainted, nothing that he played or painted could be judged upon its merits, like a mouse pursued by ferrets. Little John would never know the peace to let his ideas grow. So the lad was kept sequestered, making sure he'd not be pestered, while he wrote his timeless prose, composing these and painting those. The tutors cost a grand a day. <coughs> Excuse me. How he wished they'd go away. See the spaces on the wall. The threadbare rugs, the empty hall. How else to keep the banks at bay? Papa looked strained. Mama turned grey. But both agreed it was a joy to educate their brilliant boy. Little John, when then he grew to manhood, took the useful view that publication of his stuff would probably bring in enough to keep his parents from the street. He thought the idea pretty neat, till agent after agent cried, and slapped a thigh and clutched a thigh. What did you say you want to do? Why, no one's ever heard of you. Showed him the door, and sent to press the negligible ghosted mess of Debbie Pleb celebrity. They're just a child to you and me, a fool unschooled. She nonetheless made quite an educated guess at just how much the papers pay the sort of bimbo who'll betray a member of the cabinet. She's living on the proceeds yet. A Botox multi-millionaire whose implant boobs, false nails and hair and tattooed bottom. Do we care? Are on the chat shows everywhere. And Ian Posh, oh, he's famous too. And unresigned, they never do. The scandal helped him keep his seat. Where? Cottaging a grisk. While driving drunk, he smashed the car of Nobby Blockhead, soccer star, recorded fame for throwing up. Believe it, in the FA Cup.
Cocaine in Spain, too much champagne, and whoops! Celebrity again. The moral is, and you can bet it, unless you're famous, just forget it. Little John cast up his eyes. To heaven. Try a painting prize, said Reason. It's well known the Turner is a doddle and an earner. Little John took up his paints and dashed off some Renaissance saints, a dreaming landscape and a nude, like Ruskin in erotic mood. Oeuvres to match the Louvre in Paris, better even than Rolf Harris. Gutted, sad, and sorely vexed, that year, next year, and the next, Naturally, he didn't win. But this year, looking pinched and thin, he made the shortlist. It was said his masterwork would knock them dead. What a concept, simply vast and cutting edge, he had at last purchased for an unnamed price. A thermonuclear device strapped it on and kept his date with the committee and with fate. His fellow artists stood like this. Their offerings of shit and piss applauded. But they had to learn this year was not their turn a turn. The whole committee rose as one, and flashlights froze their favourite sun, each one struck a rapturous pose, and frozenly embraced the chosen. Little John, among the feces, blew himself and them to pieces. In the deepest pit of hell, Little John is doing well. Honour shines as honour must. Parole has even been discussed. He won, of course. But in his heart, he wonders. Was it really art? <laughs>